So this talk today is a speech, everything and let them wise. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, the sponsors, the sponsor uh, Texpian, Texpian. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong, the Texpian, uh, and also uh, there was some from a Texpian, the vice president, I guess, uh, did a great uh, talk about AI today uh, and the machine learning. So, uh, but uh, very interesting. Uh, Things were already in production. So um, about me right now, so I'm a developer, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft MVP and developer technologies. So um, not an AI MVP, uh, but um, I get more and more into AI. And the reason is I'm definitely not a math rock star. So in the past, AI and machine learning wasn't possible for me or wasn't a realistic thing. Um, but uh, Microsoft Cognitive Services, where we are going to talk about uh, at least about one specific service, as very developer focused. So uh, you will see the demos today will be coding. I'm going to code with you. I'm going to code with C sharp. It's my uh, five favorite uh, coding language, and so uh, we will do amazing things. Um, I came into the scene uh, as a developer, not only as an MVP, but also in the past as a developer when I founded my nonprofit D Soft uh, because I really wanted to make solutions to help people with disabilities um, and then to reach as much people with disabilities to give them as much quality as life as possible or being inclusive as all the other people. And during the pandemic, we also help uh, other organizations, nonprofits, so not only with people with disabilities, but bringing the tech to social organizations, but also social knowledge uh, to tech organizations. So that's what I'm doing at the DSoft uh, and as an MVP. So on our agenda today is a primer into accessibility for you. I'm going to talk about speech for accessibility. I'm going to talk about bytes of quality speech. And then you're going to see how you implement this in the WPF applications and web applications. And, and of course, that's already time to wrap up. And for thank you for staying to attend this talk and for giving me the opportunity. So we're going to start, as I said, and as I promised, by the primary into accessibility. Um, let's talk about people with disabilities. Uh, and I want to talk about some specific disabilities uh, today. And um, I want to talk about people with learning disabilities, people with autism, or people who are on the autism spectrum disorder, on the spectrum. Um, then uh, I want to talk about dyslexia and people with mental health situations or difficulties. And you will see why later on. Um, but first off, with learning disability, they have difficulties with reading, understanding, cognition, with structure. People with autism have or can have difficulties with structure, and they need a lot of confirmation sometimes. They need more confirmations than people without autism. We all know that people with dyslexia have difficulties with reading and writing. And then you say, well, do you add mental health? Yeah, they can read or they are. Everyone can have temporary uh, mental health situations. Yes, that's true. But even then, confirmation can really help. And speech is a great way to build confirmation. Um, so if you add speech to written text, even if you can read it, it can sound way more realistic and way more true, way more logic. That's the reason that it also really can help sometimes for people with maybe temporary mental health situations. Uh, but I want to go a bit deeper today also on learning disability. And why are you doing this? This is a disability in the disability spectrum. We all talk about disability that is less known. So people know people with blindness, vision loss. People know people with auditory difficulties, with motor restrictions. It's all great, but for that three people, it's great, but are the most IT tools for, um, but there is a group you forgot, uh, not me, but a lot of people and the tech industry, and there's people with learning disabilities. That's uh, an example as people with Down syndrome. Too many people think, yeah, they don't, they can't work on a computer if they can't read, so they are just going to institutions or their caregiver helps them or their parents. But I'm really pro inclusion and pro the inclusion of people with also learning disabilities in the normal life. And there, everything has started for me as a person, not only at the DSO, but even 
Before that, in 2012, and I joined Ithaca, uh, an organization in Austin, Belgium, to help with software for people with learning disabilities. So we're going to talk about this. These are people, people with the diagnosed learning disabilities always have both, so the, the left pane of the screen and the right pane. So they have difficulties with intellectual functioning and with adaptive behavior. Intellectual function is also called intelligence or and, uh, mental capacity. And people like numbers uh, and definitely IT people like numbers. We can talk about an IQ score between 70 and 75. If you know that uh, uh, 120 is normal and a lot of developers have even 130, 140, uh, 35, uh, 135. People with the learning disabilities, we can say an average 70, 75, so it's low. And so, and as I said, they also have difficulties with adaptive behavior. And these are conceptual skills like language, literacy, money, contacts like time and numbers. That's the reason I'm not so big fan of even due to the pandemic. If we talk about that countries is going completely cashless, and if you have a money in your mo in your hand you can learn quite of people that are learning disabilities kind of the, the the money concept but if you can imagine that there are people with learning disabilities who can't use an app by example and you go to a world that's only a, a cashless world yes it, those people will be more and more excluded from the normal life and what i want and my vision is to include them more and more the same is for time numbers but they also have difficulties with social skills, social responsibility, self-esteem, and practical skills like activities and daily living. And this also includes personal care and health care. And oh yes, we still have the realm of accessibility too, and we never should forget them. People with blindness, with vision loss, people with auditory disabilities, people with motoric restrictions. The only reason that I put uh, the, the, the mental or the learning things on before is because that is the less developed software for this, is the less well-known group, the less known group. And by example, for you will see later in the talk for people with blindness, vision loss, there are already great things um, on the computer with speech, but it's an another way that it works. And for people with auditory disabilities, they are really working on that uh, worldwide on that uh, with sign language uh, doing to AI and so. But that's not what I'm going to talk about for you today. And I want to refer to the Microsoft uh, Persona Spectrum that Microsoft uh, published in their uh, inclusive design line, guidelines. And there they say that each disability is permanent, temporary, or situational. By like example, touch, if, if it's permanent if you have one arm. Uh, it can be situational if you are a new parent uh, or you have an arm gen, uh, injury that is temporary. So for people that, who are, who are for example, are blind, they can be completely blind or just a distracted driver. So that's about the persona spectrum. So if you develop for one people, we live with disabilities with for one persona, you can extend to many, many people. That's the vision because we need to make accessibility great and famous and the only way of working in software. So today this talk is about speech, as you know, uh, for accessibility. And I'm going to take you on a class into history. And just by making the statement, what is computer speech? And the official name for this technology is speech synthesis. And that is an artificial production of human speech um, and a computer system use it for that as a speech computer or a speech synthesizer. And this can be implemented in software and or hardware um, and they can ramble a uh, different kind of working. Um, you also have speech recognition that is the reverse process, uh, but that's not what my talk is going about today. Uh, this source of this is on Wikipedia and uh, everything uh, you can see if you go to my short Brandly to make it easier, uh, then you see um, that uh, more of both that, very more about that. Uh, and there's a history of that, and a brief history about computer speech. It started in the game industry uh, with metal, 
Um, then, um, so there was first one, then also after Metal, uh, in the same time, uh, 1982, um, there was uh, the first uh, commercial one with the uh, voice synthesis. Uh, Atari game again, you can also link Atari to gaming. And then uh, the first uh, big computer company was Apple, um, who, who started with that. Uh, the first Android using uh, text-to-speech possibilities and had uh, was in 2009 uh, with Android 1.6, but this was not with AI. So not everything of computer speech is AI. By example, the Android one is not AI. But Alexa, we also talked about in the chat today a lot about Alexa bots and can you expose our bots to Alexa? Yeah, Alexa is popular and well known with speech and it's uh, the first uh, software as a service, uh, including uh, or using uh, speech synthesis. And I'm a Belgian, as I said before, and I'm quite proud of it because unfortunately that company doesn't exist anymore, but uh, also in this, uh, let's say the the role, the ages of uh, of learning on both speech and everything is hot, the internet the ages, let's say 1980, 1995, uh, between that. We had the company uh, LNH uh, LNH, and, and it's for the people Legnote and Hospi. Uh, and they are really researching into speech. They did everything from speech, computer speech. And at a certain point, they were really famous. And some people in Belgium where I live, we, we, we joke about, about it, but Belgium could be the Silicon Valley. Uh, but unfortunately, those people uh, are not famous for their speech engine, but they did bad things. They did fraud. Um, I'm really against fraud. Fraud is not okay, but I'm still a bit proud of about the research for speeches that happened close to where I live. Um, and if I talk about, I already said, uh, there are a lot of tools for people with blindness, vision loss. So why isn't this working for people with learning disabilities? Of course, if I say this, I need to explain that was the difference and how did it work. For people with blindness and or let's call it complete vision loss or vision loss, you have screen readers and it's read aloud or they call it screen readers, they call it voiceover. And it's really great for people with blindness, vision loss. And how does it work? That reads sequentially the whole screen. So if you are, um, I'm from Belgium, and so we leave, we read top left to bottom right. So if I had a screen reader, it will begin here, it will read speech, verses, read aloud, voiceover, and it will sequentially read everything. That is a uh, screen reader. So it's a, the screen navigation included with a text uh, to speech engine. But if I talk about speech, I put between brackets separate speech. That's great for people with a learning disability and with dyslexia. And how does it work? You click on the control and you read it aloud. But it's really important. And uh, with my pointer, I can give you a great demo. Let's imagine that people with learning disabilities, they do see, but they really don't understand language. The letters are just characters. It's just like uh, if I look handy for me, I should have a, a disability in handy. But let's imagine I'm looking here, my eyes are staring here on between the, the intersense, uh, the intersection of learning disability and dyslexia. Or let's say my, my eyes are staring here, uh, click a control. And you start, to, so my eyes are here, and you start the screen reader navigation, and it takes everything from here. It's not that I am blind, so I see everything. I don't know where the, where the cursor is, and I only wait to know what this is. Can you imagine how confusing this is? That is the reason that screen readers and voiceover isn't used for people with learning disabilities, but the speech is great for them. So the use cases are dyslexia, learning disabilities, the need for confirmations, and you even can use it into, for example, public transport, announcing which stop does it is, not only putting it above uh, on a header in the bus, but also saying out loud uh, which stop it is will really help people with learning disabilities. Uh, by example, if they go to somewhere because with inclusion is not a time anymore that they are just in an institution and they don't have a part of the life. Now let's focus on Microsoft Cognitive Speech because that's the talk about, that's the technology we're going to use today. 
So, and that's part of a Microsoft Cognitive Services. I call it the Microsoft Developer Focus AI solution. It's a part of Azure. It's developer focused. You don't need to be a math rock star. You don't need to be a science engineer. So it's great for me. I only need to code uh, in the language of my choice. For that, you need, so you need an Azure account and you need to make uh, a speech account. So you can create that. And then you can get your keys and your endpoints uh, that you will use uh, while talking, taking, talking to the service and coding. And what's better than showing screenshot that's demoing it for you today. So I already have Azure here. And I can click on create a resource. Of course, I can search for speech, but I also can look to AI plus machine learning. And you will see if you see more that there are a lot of services from Microsoft and even from third parties. So if you look to cost quality services, it's really some great thing to explore and all the services, all the speakers today are, we're ta are we're talking about, it's all included here. But I'm going to search, speech, speech, speech. Okay. And I can create a speech engine. I choose my Visual Studio Enterprise. I do a DD speech cognitive. DD cognitive, I choose my region. Okay. I give it a name. DD speech uh, seven, by example. But I'm not going to do this because I create everything already. So I just show how it works. So it's that easy. You need the pricing tier. I don't have the free anymore. I can click give you plus create but we are not going to do this. I'm going back to home, so I'm leaving, and here I have my DD speech. And as you saw today, I just uh, experimented during the talk uh, about uh, the bots. Uh, I made a Rammstein bot, as I uh, said in the chat, so I'm going to uh, speech. And here you can see my keys and my endpoints. Don't worry if you see them. Uh, I'm going to. You can refresh them, uh, so you can always generate them. So if you see them today, uh, you can show them. You can hide them. Uh, you can regenerate them, and then uh, you know it. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, so you can do it if you do a demo and it's offline. You can see. Uh, you can keep it safe for yourself. Uh, so I know coding. Uh, you can. In fact, you can do cognitive services, all the services today, nearly all the services in Azure, you can do in multiple languages. Uh, but I am a, a C Sharp uh, fan, uh, so uh, we are going to do it today in C Sharp. And for C Sharp, uh, there are two ways to do this. You can do it via the SDK, the Software Developer Kit, and you can do it via REST. And they both are different, and they have uh, other use cases. And I'm going to show them both to you today. We're going to start it with the speech, with the SDK. I'm going to talk about this. And it's the easiest way. So we need to use at top of our project, you know, at top of our class. Uh, the code here is just a, the important code, but it's not in the right uh, sub, um, sub um, procedures and methods just because I want to put it on the screen and because there's a demo coming later today, but it's just the code. You need to use the, the Microsoft quality services dot speech. So that's the SDK, the NuGet package that we did. We have a config uh, that you read from subscriptions. You need to push your key and your region. And then you use the speech synthesizer, your synth is a new synthesizer with the details of your config. And you just do an array speech text async. Do you remember before uh, was I talking about the speech synthesis? This, so I said we're going to use the synthesizer again. It's even baked in into the SDK. Um, so that's really the code to SDK. With that code, you can get a load of text, for example, that you put in the variable text. That easy. So in, in less than five, in, in five lane calls, I don't include the, the angle brackets. Uh, sorry, the brackets. You can do this, the basic thing. So it's really, really easy and not. And, Less, not a lot of code, it's nearly no code. If you do it in REST, you need to do way more code. 
as, as I said, I guess as advantages and disadvantages, I'll be going to see later the difference. To say it, to teach you a bit, is about where you're going to deploy the application, where you're going to do everything. Uh, if you can do it with the, the SDK, it's the easiest way. If you can't do it with the SDK, yeah, then you need to do REST because REST works everywhere. And for REST, you need, as I said, a lot more code, not only this talk. I have three, not every this slide, I have three slides of code you need to do uh, if you want to do it via REST. So first, you need to set an authorization token. It's not needed as the SDK. So for here, we make an HTTP client. We set the headers to the OCP APM subscription key. You you give the you pass the subscription key. Your risk, your response as your access token. So you have your access token and you set that into the speech. For example, it's just a cloud that I'm working internally in my code. So um, the result is my stream the get TTS. So the, this is a method get TTS or get text to speak, and that uh, results. A stream, just a stream, an audio stream. So to call that, uh, you need to make a body. So this thing that you need to do, so you need to give the language, you can set the voice, uh, a gender, you can do all these things also, of course, in the SDK way. Uh, you include your text, but it has to be an SSML. SSML is a speech markup language. So um, then again, we make a HTTP client. We set the content to the string content of the body. We add uh, quite a lot of headers. Um, and then our response is the client.postAsync. And this results, this returns in a stream. You can't pass the stream directly to your speakers. So we need to save it to a file. And then you need to code to, to, to save it to an MP3 file. So this code to write a file stream to save the, the voice the audio to an MP3 file with the stream writing. So the API style versus the SDK, the SDK style. With the API, you can only save audio to a file. There's need to develop the file generation code, so to the, the file, the MP3 file, by example. It's everywhere possible, so everywhere. That's the good thing about it. Um, and you can't send the audio directly to the speakers. The SDK, you can send the audio directly to the speakers. You can save the audio to a file. It's really easy to use, a few lines of code, and that's not everywhere possible. There are some things to keep in mind. The code here is just uh, speaking, so or you produce the speech in a MP3 file, or you send it directly to the speakers. Uh, and I just guess I, then I need to stop sharing my screen and uh, and check a button again, and to 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 return audio, computer audio. And um, you need to count your characters for your code, and maybe save it to a database. Or you will save it to a kind of database. If you want to pause the speech and play more, uh, and the pay model is on the used characters. So. I go into a demo via the SDK, and as I said, I stopped my screen sharing just because I forgot to um, to accept computer audio, and that's really needed that you heard what I'm doing. So I'm going to reshare my screen, and I just need to check the button with computer audio, and I do just the same. Okay, you should see my screen again. Is it true? Does everyone see my screen again? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can see it. OK, so uh, we're going to do the demo right now. And here I have my text help. As I said, here I have the key. I just copy that key. Uh, I will uh, refresh everything after my talk. And here I have a console application I wanted to push. I put it over here, OK. OK, welcome to my speech demo. We are not going to use the translate today, uh, only about speech today in this talk. Uh, I want to speak. I need to paste my key. I need to enter my region. OK, I'm authenticated and my language is set and I can type a text with the load.
Hi, Puna. I am excited to be here. Did you hear this? Yes, we did. Yes. Okay. Virtually, at least. So this is the code, folks. This is the application and command prompt. And what did I did in the application? So uh, I, I use my class, and here I have in my class. So the the class the the, the class project uh, class library. I mean, I have my model. So just a C sharp model. You know what it is. You know the drill. Uh, and I have an interface. The interface is my is uh, the I speech service. That's the code I built by Sabbath interface. So you need to you can authenticate to get the load, write the file. Yeah, you know what it is. Set authorization tokens, and then here you have my um, SDK speech service. So that implements from the speech service. This is the code that's needed uh, to do it via the SDK way. So we use uh, the Microsoft Cognitive Speech and the audio. So we make our speech config. We do the speech config from subscriptions with the authentication key. Who comments from out is my authentication and out is again just a C sharp class. Um, saving uh, in the runtime all my details. So SDK again. Um, you configure, you give you you give the result that you are uh, configured, or if something wrong, you get the result that something is wrong. The set character is just you are doing the count and the characters. It's not really important right now. And here you have the really simple read the load code. And here you can also via SDK write to a file. And here you have the not used one. These are the 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 things that I implement for my interface, who are needed for the rest service. In my application and my program.ts, here I, I uh, say uh, in my code that I want to use the SDK way, and I get everything. My display is just a controller, the display controller, and just uh, the communication, getting information uh, from the controller and pushing into my uh, program code. Then I have my speech controller. It's also it's just trying to work with the controllers, but after all, I don't really need if you do that. Maybe you can also directly do it in the program.ts or in the display. It's all about coding patterns, but in fact, it all, uh, re, um, it's all uh, refers to the um, to the the classes here, the rest and the speech. Um, and then here I just uh, I do uh, I get my uh, details and I iterate. Um, so I iterate always and I do it is a while loop. I mean uh, that I get more and more text right now. I'm going to command the SDK code. Of course. And we're doing the rest way. So. So command out SDK. Uh, this, of course, is not good because uh, for the rest, I need to do the tuple with three things because for rest, you also need your endpoint, and that's not needed for the SDK. So here, the, the tuple of the credentials is here also uh, containing uh, the um, the endpoint. So this not commented out anymore. And the rest, so it will, uh, via my speech, it will, uh, the speech controller, it will authenticate to rest. And all the rest is the same code, except that we are not going to speak, but we're going to write a file. I first show it uh, in demo, and then I show the code. So again, I want to speak. I need to enter my key. I is the same okay and i need to paste my endpoint it's also here and the credentials that of course is not updated into github and control v okay i need to text uh, speak it uh, i need to type a text i want to read the load uh, 
I need to add a file name that is demo while talk 15. So I don't need to add an extension because I coded that I add the extension via my code. And so it's well progressed. Uh, I don't want to do it again. So right now I open my uh, solution explorer. Open solution explorer, uh, open file and File explorer, I mean. And here I have my output. And it's demo two. Uh, so demo wild talk as a new one. Demo wild talk, 15th of Jan. If you it can be possible because you don't need to trust me. I can do it again because I needed to show it that the file wasn't created. So here, I the folder, there's no demo, demo two uh, one talking. So I do another one, I do one, I paste, I say. And I need to grab the key again. Uh, I mean the endpoint. So if you look here, there's no demo two while speaking, 15th of Jan, so we are going to present it. Okay. I open my open folder, and of course there is a demo two. Oh, it's not this one, sorry. Demo two while speaking, 15th of Jan. So, so what I did here, so it's again the same uh, with the interface, but no, I refer to my um, to my uh, uh, REST uh, speech service. And the REST speech service, you sell the code that I have for the right to file. This code to write is to an MP3 file. You can specify the part. Uh, you have your uh, get text to speech here. Um, that you also, it's really important that you add a user day agent, and else it's not working. You need to provide your access code token. So, but first we need to grab our authentication code. Okay. And so this, uh, and then the get that to speech, and you also have the authorization code. And as you see in my uh, program, uh, here uh, I just um, do the right to file speech dot write a file. If I put uh, the right to file here and this SDK, it will also write to file. That's the advantage of working with interfaces. It wouldn't uh, have a difference. Okay, so this was the SDK, and I also already I'm quite on time. Demo with uh, the vast API or doing the speech things with the API. Why now we want to talk about speech for WPF? Now you are seeing me doing amazing demos in command line, and you heard me talking about why you should use applications to work to help people with learning disabilities. I can imagine the first thing that you can think is do they use command line? Of course not. 
because we all know as a developer is the easiest way to start to vote to start hacking things and if it works in command line we we do it in other uh, library projects and then we can do all the rest all the other magic with it so i'm going to talk about the wpf why should you do this and when should you do this uh, you can make a uh, windows applications accessible to for people with learning disabilities you can use the read functions on fields by example um or you can also check written text by example for people with dyslexia to read it alone what can you speech what can you control uh, each control as possible and i really encourage you to do that at least at the help page and of course the other necessary elements i'm going to do the demo also of this here i set up to a um, text of the wpf i set a startup project and i just uh, copy it the key to my uh, clipboard. We open the WPF application. We minimize the sausage. Here you will see it's not the most beautiful application on earth. Definitely not, it's maybe the most ugliest application on earth because it's it's way longer that I worked at WPF. I just for this demo, I want to show that it's possible in WPF. How many times you saw speech in WPF? Uh, of course, if you want to do that in production, you need to beautify that, uh, not a bit, but uh, a lot. No, you, uh, I'm going to speak in, a, in, in. And I want to write some text here. Hi, Puna. Puna. Um, you, you. And I can with the load. HI Pune. How are you doing? How is the weather in Pune? And I can also click on the help screen. And then in my help window, uh, I have the help for that and I can with the load. How do I use this app? You can use this app to write text and listen to the text. You can use this app together with someone with a learning disability. If you do this, the caregiver can write text and let it read aloud to the person with special needs. You can paste text in this app and let this read aloud. So there's a text to speech um, and WPF. And here if you go to the code, uh, you just will see that it's all the same code. It's also uh, having the NuGet package and my dependencies, NuGet. And, and so I have my main main though. You don't need to see the example, I guess. <laughs> so I just, again, working with the synthesizer, uh, getting the speech from subscriptions with my credentials. And it's the same in the help and though. The only difference that I did in the help and though, because I really test it, uh, what's the best result? And if you do the complete text, who is here in the label, this here, uh, with here the dashes, that isn't a great result uh, for speaking. I, uh, for the audio result, I, I heard that, I tested that. So what did I did here is just really no rocket science. I made my array of the strings, so all the things who are in the, in the text block, I put into an array of uh, just single line sentences. I have my synthesizer and I just uh, do a for each on uh, all the text, so all the strings, all the sentences and the array, and then I do the array to speak text async. So it's really not a look at science. So you saw it in WPF, but you can and maybe you should also doing this for the web. Because how many people are working on Met websites at this time? And how many people are still working with just, let's say, normal Windows application? So let's talk about speech for the web. Um, and there are some differences. You have speech on the hosted web apps. By example, uh, the speech SDK, so the just the SDK NuGet package is the whole thing, uh, can add it uh, to ASP.NET hosted websites. 
And this can also be to ASP that with Blazing websites who are hosted. I really love Blazing. That's really the the thing that I really love, the quality services and the Blazing if I make uh, accessible products. Uh, I came from the Xamarin world, but yeah, I switched to Blazing. Yeah, it happens. Um, but if you do that, this provides a whole new way of web accessibility for people with learning disabilities. And I really believe oh, this is the future if you really want to include everyone. Let's imagine, uh, let's talk about the COVID pandemic right now. Every country uh, or even every region has their own um, restrictions, their own COVID restrictions. What's allowed, what's not allowed, what are the regulations? If you are a person with a learning disability, then, and you can't know what you have, you can do what's allowed or not, you don't want to get a fine or get punished because you do something that you don't know that you can't do it. Of course, you can ask your caregiver or your parent, but inclusion is all about that you can live your life as, as everyone else, so as normal as possible. So if that kind of website with very important information, for example, what you can or can't do would be uh, having a text to speech uh, on quality speech, it will really include more people. Um, and you can also do it on WASM, so just WebAssembly or yeah, call it WebAssembly or just uh, client applications. Um, if you do it on Blazor, by example, on WebAssembly, you can only use the WASP speech. So you can't you can't send it directly to the speakers to the speakers. So you need to generate and save the audio files to the web project, for example. If it's on an Azure static web, web, web site, website, sorry. But of course, you can also use it uh, to to send it to Azure Blob Storage. You can generate, uh, you can generate all the speech things and put it to Azure Blob Storage, and then listen around by clicking on it. Um, of course, I'm going to give a demo. Uh, the demo will be on the first one, only about uh, the server side things um, today. I have another application here. So here is a website. It's still just all my local hosts only. I can edit the load. Welcome to a positive lifestyle. Welcome on my website about a positive lifestyle. Too many people have stress that results in burnout, boredom, and depression. I want to give you three easy advices for a positive and happy lifestyle. On this site, you find advice on optimism, passion, purpose. Feel free to browse around for inspiration. So, but then you can say, what's the difference with that and a screen reader? Not a lot, except you're not, uh, you are not reading the, the menu and that people with learning disabilities don't have screen reader tools on their device because they didn't learn to work with it. Uh, but besides of this, you can couple it loose, loosely couple it by example, here you have it on the title. Optimism. Uh, and you have it uh, on each paragraph here. An old quote said, is your glass half full or half empty? For optimistic people, their glass is always half full. The opposite of optimism is pessimism. Pessimistic people don't feel lucky and for them their glass is always half empty. So I have the same for passion. When you are in your passion, time doesn't exist anymore and you feel warm and enlightened. And for purpose. Purpose. Um, and here on the website, I, I pivoted a different ways of, uh, of doing it. First of all, I have my uh, speech service here. And as I said, it's a Blazor uh, hosted application, hosted, so it's not the best way. So it's the SDK style. So I also need the SDK in my you get packages. The same code, uh, just maybe another way of that I wrote it, but it's also a continuous progress, but it's the same, let's call it base code. 
And then I have my uh, my pages here on the index. Uh, I have just my basic, so my, my uh, uh, C-sharp mixed with HTML. I have also a pictograph. I have my paragraph. I need to add a ref to it because the ref is an element reference. And you need the element reference to get the info who is in the element. And then um, I can read it alone. So I just get the info from here. So I get the contact with the element. And I read it alone with my get element back here. And I do the synthesis speaking async. OK. And then I do also, I'm still working on other people thing, by example, optimism. For, yeah, no, it's not this one. Uh, passion. And passion you have for each paragraph. Um, you have a uh, so the reference. So here are the elements, the element references, and then you have the content. Just uh, where's the paragraph and your buttons and um, uh, the buttons here. And so what you have here, you just uh, read the load. Uh, what's uh, in the element here? You get the element. So uh, um, the elements. Yeah, read paragraph one. You read the load. Uh, paragraph uh, paragraph one, paragraph two. And you can even do go further into this. Uh, it's not here. It's an um, optimism, and that's the way to go. That you can also do this in combination with websites with data coming from a database. But here I have my uh, DD accessibility uh, paragraph, and here I just do for each paragraph and the paragraph. Uh, I return uh, the paragraph, uh, and the result is only is there an error. So here we have only a red hit and a red load. Uh, with the element reference you get, and here you have my um, my paragraph data, and then it works with the DD accessibility paragraph. So, and then in that paragraph you have uh, your button and your content uh, with the with the code just for that paragraph. So you can really uh, work with that and evaluate, uh, improve this. Some people do also have a purpose. A purpose is a higher goal in life. Pure magic is going to happen if your passion is in line with your purpose. This is a special state of mind, a special state of being. If you want, so this is only WebAssembly. Uh, if, uh, no, it's server sorted. If you want to do that WebAssembly, so there's still uh, a lot of work, work to do. I need to generate, so for all the tasks, I need to generate the MP3 files. Uh, I do that to Azure Stackwatch, of course, but uh, it's really a project that I continue working on because uh, it's really important for those people. Um, and thank you for listening. I have some, uh, so I just want to recap. I just saw the, where the speech synthesis is coming from and the, the long history from the 1980s. I just saw how it's right now uh, using Red AI. Uh, and then I dig deeper into Microsoft Cognitive Speech, uh, part of Cognitive Services, who was doing the speech via uh, AI. And I show, first show it in the comment line, and then I took it a step deeper into WPF and even my future vision on accessible websites. I see, uh, I, I see some questions. Um, yeah, and the code. Um, yeah, the code is there. Uh, 